space station. And uh, I have to say that it's not Leonardo DiCaprio. We all know that. <laughs> Got to squeeze that in. This mission will take us one step closer to completing a world-class research center in a unique environment in space. And I won't uh, dwell on that because we'll have more competent speakers than I to speak about that. Now we'll begin with our program. And I have the very special guest today who will sing our national anthem. She is the reigning Ms. America, Susan Jeske. She is the former Ms. Colorado and former Ms. USA International. We should also know that Ms. Jeske holds the Guinness World of Record for singing the national anthem the most times at an event in a 24-hour period. <laughs> now, she accomplished this record to raise over $93,000 for charity, so it was for a good cause. Or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket ripped clear, the bombs bursting in the air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does the head star spangled Thank you very much, and I'm very happy to be here this morning to welcome you to the launch of STS-102. And you probably know that this flight really consists of three different crews, so I want to introduce you to the members of each of those crews, tell you a little bit about them or what they're going to be doing on the flight or have been doing the last few months. Um, if you sort of look at the patch there in the lower uh, right corner, You'll see uh, four names across the top and then two sets of three names along the bottom. And that sort of shows you the three crews. The four names across the top are the members of the shuttle crew that will go both up and down on the shuttle that launches, uh, launches today and then lands again in about 12 days from now. Um, the names along the bottom are the names of the crews that um, are either currently living on the International Space Station or are going up on this shuttle to switch out with the crew members and will be staying. Um, the first three names cross their um, users. Thank you, Kenny, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being here. Um, we know it's kind of early in the morning, and uh, many of you travel from uh, far away to be with us tonight. Uh, it certainly honors all the thousands of people that have worked on this uh, very challenging space project. And uh, I think uh, this will be a very, very memorable morning for you. And uh, again, thank you for being here. I'm going to be very brief because uh, I know that you want to hear from Mr. Golden, who's going to follow me with some additional words of welcome and uh, words about the mission. I think what you want to hear from me, though, is what I'm going to launch this morning. Uh, I just came from the um, uh, Launch Control Center. I've uh, got a briefing from all the folks over there, and we filled the tank on time. Uh, all, everything went well. The crews on board, uh, they're doing well. The vehicle's in uh, great shape as I left the Control Center, not working any problems. Uh, it's a beautiful night in Florida. It is a little bit chilly, um, and the only issue that we're uh, just monitoring and watching is whether or not we would get ice on the tank. Uh, the ice, uh, as it vibrates and we go fast, could come off and hit the windshield or the tiles on the shuttle, and that would be very dangerous. Right now, there's just a little frost on the tank. Frost is good. Ice is bad. So the um, uh, situation looked very good as I left the control center, and we uh, have high confidence that we'll be able to launch this morning. As uh, all of you probably know, safety is number one, though, and if something should come up between now and uh, T-Zero, uh, that would be unsafe. We will, of course, 
uh, scrub the launch and uh, hopefully many of you will be able to come back again and uh, be able to witness it. But as I said, I want to be uh, very positive right now. Things look very good and uh, we think you'll have a, a great experience this morning. God willing. And now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, um, the Administrator of NASA, the Honorable Dan Goldman. Tonight, you're here to see a launch to the International Space Station a few hundred miles above the Earth. And our limit today is maybe a few hundred thousand miles back to the moon. Some decade or two from now, it will be, and uh, we'll be able to go a little further, maybe to Mars, 100 million miles. But if you want to think really big thoughts, look up at the night sky, look to Orion, come east a bit to Sirius, which is the brightest star in the sky, and go up a little bit north, and you'll see a star called Procyon. That star is very much like our own sun, has about the same intensity, has about the same lifetime as our own sun. It's three and a half uh, parsecs from Earth, which means it's about 10 light years from Earth. That's the time it takes light. That's the distance light will travel in 10 years at 186,000 miles a second, something like 60 trillion miles, not too far. But at NASA, we always think about the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. We don't know how to get there. But we're working on it. Uh, if you're a Trekkie like me, there's a warp drive on the Enterprise. It's uh, antimatter that powers it. And uh, right now, as we speak, at Penn State University, they're working on a container for antimatter. So maybe some decades or centuries from now, uh, one of my successes will be standing here talking about a mission that we haven't figured out how to do. But the space program is not just about nuts and bolts, it's about dreams and hopes. And I believe that's why we have this incredible interest in space, because it is the next frontier. So now let me take you back to Earth, because I wanted you to dream a little bit, and forget about uh, your daily issues. Tonight you're going to see a very major event, if it's safe. And I think Roy said it just right. At NASA, our number one priority is safety. That's before we design rockets, before we do anything else, it is safety. And if it is not safe, we will not launch. And we just invite you to come back night after night. Not a bad thing to come to Florida this time of year, night after night. But I think we have a good chance of going tonight. We're going to go up to the international... So about two minutes into the flight, the uh, solid rocket boosters are all used up and they will separate and uh, we'll probably see that today too. And then uh, the station will continue, will continue to accelerate. Uh, the acceleration will go up to about uh, uh, three G's or so. Arms and drives and then at eight and a half minutes into the flight, we told them to come see you. But Sissy, her daughter out of the second litter, weighs five and a half pounds. You can change that. One minute and count. All right, one minute to go. <laughs> So when I get home from work and I pull in the garage and take them outside, you know, oh, something must be better because she sat down in the driveway and was chilling on the bed. So you're going to back to my eyes up. Right. Uh, computers on board are controlling now. At 10 seconds, you'll start to see a little sparkles come on, and then, uh, and then shortly after that, the main engine's alight. 
T minus 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, don't you make it shock? 4, 3, 2, 1, push your ignition. Was it loud? Very loud. How far do you think it is right now? Are you cold? <laughs> very cold. <laughs> it's very cold. Give it a take. Give it a take.